Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Akataya of JSA, coming to you from ITW 2021. Joining me today is my good friend, Mr. Gil Santelis of NJFX, New Jersey Fiber Exchange. Gil, welcome to JSA TV again. Jamie, thank you. Thank you for having us on the show. It's, it's something we look forward to every year, being part of JSA TV, and thank you for having us. Uh, thank you, Gil. And, uh, you know, our, our long friendship, our long history, never has there been uh, a unique time, I could say. ITW um, is back. We're excited to be part of it. What are you looking forward to most at ITW this year? You know, it's been a long break for us. The last time we were in person was in Brazil at the, at the capacity event in South America. And that was close to 18 months ago. So we haven't seen our friends um, in the industry. We've been limited to these video platforms and we're looking forward to finally seeing our friends and colleagues from the US, hopefully from around the world that can potentially be with us and, 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 and have a cup of coffee, have a drink and and just get to the, get to business again, get back into negotiations and talks. Yeah, see each other face to face. Um, I'm really looking forward to it myself. And, and also we should say ITW has done a great job in, in bringing a hybrid model to, uh, to its event. So uh, for sure folks can also log in virtually. You are speaking on a panel at ITW on September 1st that I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's taking place 10 a.m. Eastern called Subsea Connect, Global Subsea Trends. And I can't think of a more well-suited panel topic for you, my friend. So tell us, give us a little bit of a, 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 a teaser, if you will. What, what will you be sharing there? So there's been a lot of new projects announced in the last 12 to 18 months, and we're looking forward to getting insight. You know, there's the Confluence project that's been announced that's going to be connecting all the cable stations in the East Coast. You've seen a new cable announced uh, connecting the U.S. to South America will be the fourth new cable connecting South America to North America. It's a high count cable, the highest one yet so far, 12 count. So with these kinds of changes in how these networks are being put together, the, the, the structure is completely different. There's much more capacity available. And now you're creating a reason why Confluence is going to be at the right time, connecting cable stations with higher count cables, keeping us all available virtually if need be, but also supporting us in person with better applications and better connectivity. Yeah, better applications, better connectivity. You know, you recently said that we are sitting in one of the hottest markets ever for telecommunications in terms of investment. So what do you think, subs why? why do you think SubC is booming? So, so we're a global society, you know, we'd like to have our data available to us anywhere, anytime. And there's geographies that are better suited than others in terms of these big application deployments. So the subsea makes the world interconnected. And whether it's the Nordics, you want to try and have your compute or your application hosted, or you have an Israeli application that's just, uh, you know, world class you want access to. It's all about getting access to those systems. Another project announced recently was the, it was the Blue Med cable, now it's the Blue Raman cable that's going to provide uh, a bypass of the Suez Canal through the help of the Israelis. It's a fascinating time for us to innovate and create new infrastructure that's much more resilient. And we need that. We absolutely need that uh, additional infrastructure. Uh, for sure, you mentioned these applications uh, more and more being developed every day. Uh, we need access. And you created a model right there at the cable landing station. We can see it behind you uh, as a hub for this type of connectivity, much more than just a place where cables land. So people all over the world coming to NJFX, your facility there, to learn about what you're doing. Why? Why do you think that is? You know, the, the term carrier neutral came about 20, 25 years ago, and it was a place where you can interconnect networks which became the beginning of the internet. That's what the internet really is, is connecting networks together. Um, because we did a purpose-built facility, a tier three facility, and had it located at a cable landing station with access to ductworks, we became a cable landing station. We have the Hofru system in our facility. We interconnect with the Tata Meet Me Room. We bring four subsea cable systems to one place with 20 plus terrestrial networks. 
So it's the new kind of hub. It's the hub that was built with the end in mind. And we're proud to call it home and proud to call it NJFS. So amazing. Yes, I love that model. And uh, also, I was reading some of your headlines, of course. Uh, tell us about NJFX's work with United Nations recently. So the United Nations and this organization in particular, the ITU has been around for a long time. And it was established to try and have a conversation about how we're gonna connect to each other. So think about it, we first started connecting the worlds with transatlantic cables 130, 40 years ago. And the conversation was, well, how do we do this? And what are the rules of engagement? And those cables are now closer to a thousand cables globally connecting us all. And that conversation still has to happen. But the United Nations is always at the forefront of that conversation about whether it's subsea cable, whether it's 5G, whether it's infrastructure plays, the internet, and even space. The United Nations now is tapping the topic of how do we manage space? So because we play a role in global infrastructure, supporting specifically North America and the US, we wanted a seat at the table. We wanted to be able to share our thoughts and insight on how companies can work with North America and the US assets we have to make it available globally and share best practices. So as you know, we had the Ministry of Chile come to NGFX to see for themselves a year and a half ago what a cable landing station could look like if it was built with the end in mind to be a network hub. And we wanna to continue to provide that example to the world in terms of what you can do if you plan ahead. That's what we do, and the UN is a great platform to share that message. Wow, what a, what a wonderful testimony to what you and your team are doing right there in Wall Township, New Jersey, uh, really providing that global example. I love that. Where can our viewers who are interested in learning more go? Well, they can reach out to me or the team. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, we've got a new employee joining our team starting in September. Um, we'll be focusing on the enterprise space, specifically U.S. financials. But Felix Seda has been with us since day one. He's our general manager. He works primarily with the OTTs and the big wholesale providers. And please reach out to him. Or you can always come to our website and hit the contact page and ask questions. And we'll be happy to reach out to you. Absolutely. NJFX.net. Thank you so much, Gil, for being part of uh, the the important uh, space in history that we're, where we're standing in, in, the, in the hub of connectivity, NJFX, um, really that, that global example that we look to uh, as we build better network infrastructure for tomorrow. Thank you, Gil, for all you do and, and for your time here on JSA TV. And thank you viewers for tuning in. As always, happy networking. Mm -hmm.